I? No one. I'm your host, Matt Schubert, joined once again by Bennett Durando and our podcast producer, A.A. Ron Ontiveros. We got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. We're going to get into that Clippers game, what fun that was. Uh, we will be talking about the in-season tournament, the Nuggets eliminated, and we hold ourselves an NBA center draft. You can weigh in who won between me, Bennett, and A.A. Ron. Probably me, but I'll let you decide all that and more. Coming up next. And we are back at the Denver Post Podcast Studios. It smells great outside. I'm here with Bennett once again, A.A. Ron across from me. It is, uh, what, November 30th? The end of the November. Uh, we're getting into the meat of the NBA season now. We're starting to figure a few things out. The in-season tournament already decided the Nuggets no longer in it. Uh, I'm sure much to the consternation of Nikola Jokic and, mm. and crew. Very sad about that. And win- winners of three in a row now, uh, including a game in, in L.A. against the Clippers that, oh boy. They decided to shape up after getting eliminated, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they said, we want those the easier games on the schedule in the uh, the week of the knockout stage, and, and we'll... We'll go take our wins after we're knocked out. Voila. They've yeah. got it. They've got the Rockets, uh, and they've got... Well, I'm sorry, what was the second one? I'm trying to think. Uh, it's like an exact repeat of this one, oh, yeah. pretty yeah. much. So it's yeah. at the Clippers and then at home yes. against the Rockets. Which so. at the Clippers again, isn't that fun? I know. Yeah. That, <laughs> I, I was sort of like, come on, we're really going to have to watch the same teams again. It's the third game against the Clippers, the fourth against the Rockets yes. in yeah. 23 games. Like That's kind of annoying, and I think the fans will get a little fatigued by it. But then again, the Clippers game on Monday makes it sort of compelling, Yes, um, especially because you're likely going to have a more healthy... Yeah, you'll have uh, your guys. Nuggets roster, yeah. yeah you're going to um, have all your guys for that one. Whereas, you know, on that was a Monday night game, right? Wasn't it Monday night? Or it what? was. Yeah. Um, they had they didn't have Jamal obviously uh, near the end of his uh, I think the last game that he missed mm-hmm. um, didn't have N- Nikola Jokic which I was a little surprised by I he's just kind of an every game guy usually but yeah but I mean everyone's got to miss one yeah once in a while sure so, sure uh, just lower of, back pain easy enough to take all those Los Angeles Clippers fans that were so the bummed out though they didn't get to see Nikola tough stuff <laughs> <laughs> he'll be back in a week so. <laughs> That's true. So they can't that, be yeah. too upset. Uh, they got to see um, a uh, three-time, I think, All NBA player instead. So uh, at starting center that, for the Nuggets. That's so. that's true, and yeah. he ate him, ate them alive. Yeah. Absolutely, at DJ uh, DeAndre Jordan, turn back the clock game from him, even to the point where we're now fouling him on purpose. We're doing hack a D. I thought we were done with hack a DJ. I truly can't believe it, and uh, I I saw that. Like in a couple of those in-season tournament group stage finales, uh, some coaches were getting a little saucy and, and hacking guys to, to try and work the point differential to advance and everything right. on Tuesday. So that's one thing. It's sort of like an amusing situation where it's like, oh, everyone does care about this. This is kind of fun. <laughs> yes. Um, this is just Clippers desperation. Uh we need a win. We can't get a stop. We can't get a stop. We can't guard Reggie against Jackson. The two man game of Reggie Jackson and, and DeAndre Jordan yes. at home with our full strength roster, pretty much. Yeah. And so we have to foul Man. the guy who we would foul, who would get fouled on our roster in a 2016 playoff series Correct. at the end of games. Correct. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, you know, I've said it before. You can talk them up. It still says Clippers on those jerseys. There's just no getting around that. I'm sorry. It's the frickin' Clippers. Don't make me have to take them seriously. I, I wanted to ask you a couple things. One, one sort of the perspective that you would maybe have that I wouldn't would be where uh, that game will sort of reside in Nuggets' regular season history as, well, as okay. sort of a, a special, memorable novelty win? So there is there is actually sort of a, a doppelganger for that, which mm-hmm. is they went to Utah. Aaron, you might remember this. They went to Utah a few years ago. If we had Singer here, Singer loved talking about this game. This was a Singer. Ooh. 
Singer classic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, it's the uh, We All We Got game in Salt Lake City. I believe they had seven players total. It was after they had yes, traded. Yes, I read about this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was after they had made a trade and uh, with seven guys, one into Utah. And that was a good Utah team and beat them. And it, mm-hmm. that was the Gobert era. Yep. Uh, Utah yep. Jazz. Um, that Those are very similar in my mind. Although in that case, I'm pretty sure they had Nikola Jokic for that Utah game. Uh, this one. So this one might be. I think more... it's another step up. Okay. Especially when you add in the fact that both Reggie and DJ Our played Clippers, for the Clippers. Yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> and then still they, you know, beat them. So that's that's the other question. Is this a step up in terms of like impressive, amazing, weird nuggets wins, or is it more of a commentary on their opponent at the th- end of the day? I, <laughs> It's, can it be a little bit of both? Can we do a little it, bit of both? It probably can be. It's, yeah. I believe like, uh, you know, <laughs> that's if you're... Not, that's not as good uh, of podcasting, but but nah. it, the reality is it probably is a bit of both. It, if you're a nugget stan, like a real hardcore nugget stan, you're saying, culture win. This mm-hmm. is a culture win. Yep. Nuggets got the culture. They just know how to win. Um, and you're saying the exact same thing about the Clippers, except in the opposite it's a culture loss. Yes. They just don't show up for games that they don't feel like they need to. And then they lose them, and this is why they're the Clippers. The stats real quick. Reggie Jackson, 35 points, 5 rebounds, 13 assists, 15 of 19 from the field. He started Pretty four, good. started 14 for 16. Um, DeAndre Jordan, 21 points, 13 rebounds, 5 assists, Eight for eleven from the field, I believe. Seven of those eight baskets were dunks, right. and I believe five of them were alley oops from Reggie Jackson. And and I don't correct me if I'm wrong. I, 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 if I'm Aaron Gordon was in that game, and, he was not. Oh, it was who was it? Was it MPJ? I'm trying to. Th- who was? Yeah. Well, so it was somebody, but they shot poorly. Yes, yes. So uh, you, so you have Jokic, Murray, and Gordon all missing. Arguably, right. your three best players are missing. Right. And then your fourth best player. Uh, shoots three for thirteen. Yes. Um, <laughs> they so they're win. essentially without their four best players. Um, right. While uh, while L.A. had their their big four, if you want to call right. it that, <laughs> I th- they might have lost the right for it to be called <laughs> that permanently in that game. Yeah. I so um, the other part about that um, is that it came in not. A, exactly after that road trip that, that was a disaster the one for road trip but pretty close to when malone is calling out the bench mm-hmm. and saying that he's not getting enough from these guys and they sort of respond in the game that precedes it and then they win the clippers game with none of their stars and it's like oh chips righted we're good resounding response yeah, yeah. and like i mean that's I've said it a few times already that's just going to be the story of this season there are probably going to be three other times where malone blasts off on his bench um, and then they're probably going to respond over the course of maybe not immediately, but over the next week or over the next two weeks or whatever it is. There are going to be ups and downs, especially with a lot of the young guys, even Reggie Jackson. Here, the thing about Reggie Jackson, um, he is a sort of one dimensional enough player that his bad games can stink. Um, sure. Did you watch the game in? Last Friday in Houston? No, I was working on uh, prep football stuff. Then. So he plays 10 minutes and three seconds, um, gets pulled early in the second quarter. At that point, he is 0 for 4 from the field with three turnovers and a minus 23 in 10 minutes. Doesn't Rough. play the rest of the half. Mm-hmm. Uh, he that I mean, like, he is that one-on-one scoring point guard type, and even, even a couple days before, prior against Detroit something that he had sort of joked about was getting crossed up by Cade Cunningham late in that game and knowing that that he was going to need KCP's help defense like sometimes Reggie's defense is not all that great yes that's, <laughs> that's true uh, that that can be putting it kindly but on, on so like when he has a bad game it can be bad like that um but he's also capable of this other thing he's also capable of this other thing and for the most part he's been very consistent in the absence of Jamal Murray. He wasn't turning the ball over much right. at all um, before that Houston game um, and and the the one before Orlando. He, he had a few turnovers in that one too. So, um, like, I mean, overall, like, 
resounding success. But it, it's funny. I, I bring that up because that night um, I was literally – I got like emails from Nuggets fans during the game. It was like, why is Reggie Jackson on this team? <laughs> I was like, I mean, we've seen why Reggie Jackson is on this team Like yeah. over the course of the last couple of weeks. He's played right. very well. He wasn't this great is, on that road trip, though. Uh, he wasn't. He wasn't. And the, and the whole bench wasn't. So yeah. but point being, like, it wasn't just the young guys. Like, ev- everyone right. sort of struggled a little bit. Um, Reggie was good in Detroit against another former team. But, you know, those last couple of games weren't so How many great, games so. in a row have the Pistons lost? Are we at 14 now? Yeah, I don't I don't <laughs> think. that That game was probably their best chance. The yeah. one where Malone and Jokic get ejected. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. And they still lost. Uh, <laughs> that that was their opportunity right there. I think so. Um, which, by the way, like we can talk about Malone getting frustrated at the bench um, at the end of the trip, but a couple games earlier on Monday, it was sort of the bench and the role players that had to carry them across the finish line in that game. So um, that's two games early in this season without Jokic really for right. the crucial stretches where, where those guys have gotten it done. So um, inconsistencies, yes. Uh, ability to sort of step it up in big moments on the road a couple times, also yes. Uh, it's, right. It's interesting. And once you get to the playoffs, all you need is uh, one or two of them to pop in a game. You don't need the whole unit. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. So, so Christian yeah. Brown did have a good road trip, by the way. He, uh, he started... What's your thoughts on him right now? Where are, you, where are you at with Christian Brown? I mean, I think there's probably going to be some ups and downs with him too, but like right now, he scares me when he's dribbling the ball. Like it's it he, is a freaking yes, yes. And we, I mean, like we've talked about this how he the uh, the lack of deceleration, the the yes. the one velocity only when he's going downhill can be chaotic to watch. Um, but I I asked him a little about this, and he sort of said, like, yes, there's some truth to it, um, but but he was mostly focused on his defensive game. I, I think that when he's on the floor with the starting unit and he's able to uh, score via cutting, score right. via receiving some assists from Jokic, it sort of unlocks his on-ball offense when he's playing with the second unit more because you can see the confidence go up. And even if there's a reckless abandon, I think you want him confident. Like yeah. that's sort of the best version of him when he's with the second unit. Um, and he can sort of go on these bursts where he has some improbable finishes. He has surprising ups. We saw him uh, getting a pretty impressive dunk last night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and there were a handful of times during uh, the road trip where he even – just like dribbled into threes in transition, and he's has started making his threes recently, um, which I, I think he was like twenty two percent going into yeah, the road trip. That would so, be a very important development if yes. he did start knocking down threes. Yeah, the last few games have, have been really impressive. So I'm I'm right now his offense is at a level that is sort of worthy of his defense. I think. So we've got a lot of topics to get through here. Uh, Going to talk a little in season tournament. Uh, we've already talked Clippers game um, and that fantastic win. That's a, that's an all timer. It, it just to go back to your question, I think that's like one of that's one of those that people will put a pin in and reference yeah. for years to come. Yeah. Do you think? Uh, do you think? By the way, that that like. I, I don't I don't look at any like the odds stuff, but that had to like tank their championship odds and that sort of thing. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like remember what after the James Harden trade, ESPN decided that their champ championship probability was higher than the Nuggets. Ridiculous. Suddenly. So right. um, if they're the Clippers. That should <laughs> they should factor the just being the Clippers into that calculation. Like what what is that? Like you just have to ding them about fifty percent. Um, we'll also talk. Uh, we're going to do an NBA center draft. Uh, uh, and we'll we'll go over the parameters of that once we get to it. Uh, got got one mailbag question uh, later later on. It's not really a question. It's more like a hey, why didn't you guys talk about this situation? And we'll bring it up. It was about the tough guys. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, somebody had some thoughts on tough guys. Okay, um, I'm glad the tough guys got a got a response. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we'll also have. Uh, he he did not. He took issue with with me uh, saying that Charles Oakley is the toughest guy in the history of the NBA. He had his own. Um, so and then we I also have wait. we also have a new review. Um, one new review. I, I I didn't check this morning, so who knows? Maybe we have more. We'll get to those as well. And by the way, you should know 
uh, because I just did this last night. We're now on YouTube Music. So if you listen to podcasts on YouTube Music, you can now find us. Uh, I don't know if people actually do. I don't. I go to iTunes, but hey, I'm sure there are a handful. Should we put ourselves on actual YouTube? Well, we are on actual YouTube. No, I know, but I mean like video. Do do people want to look at my face? No. Yeah, probably not. (laughs) (laughs) Let's let the fans weigh in with a vote. What does it say that I like teed Matt up to insult me and he chose to insult himself instead (laughs) right there? Like that was a Reggie I, to DeAndre lob. There's, there's and I, I, I have the, I've always had a, an opinion on um, on the Talking Head shows, and it's like, do people really want to look at our faces while we talk? And does anybody want to look at my face? I've always I've my corner has been speak for uh, yourself. My well, like I said, my corner has always been nobody wants to look at my face. They have no interest in looking at my face. Why am I going to force them to? But I see it everywhere. It's all over Twitter. It's all over the TikTok, the kids. I'm so glad that I could get Matt going on a boomer rant. (laughs) (laughs) Do you even know what a boomer is? I'm like freaking two generations after the boomers. (laughs) I'm like, I'm actually like considered a millennial, believe it or not. You're not not 60. You know, one of our reviews actually, uh, I, I when uh, we were doing it with Singer was uh, that I thought uh, Matt was a seventy-year-old man. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! <laughs> that's so good. Yeah, I wonder if I would think that if I just heard your voice without knowing <laughs> what you. Well, like. it was my voice and my opinions. He said, "Yeah, I, no, I the opinions from, yeah. absolutely <laughs> that completely adds up." Yeah. I actually thought you were a boomer uh, before the pod when you were talking about growing up watching Nate Thurman play. I, 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 first of all, I didn't talk about that. That that was a complete fabrication from A. A. Ron, um, off the top rope. But all right, let's get let's get into our first thing, which is the in season tournament. We actually made predictions on the in season tournament. Uh, one of us did okay. One of us, uh, you know, was terrible. Uh, we'll see who that is. <laughs> We'll see that. So here's who ended up making it. Uh, so there's you know six groups. So, a, so whoever didn't pay attention, we're just going to run it down. Six groups, three in the east, three in the west, one wild card from, from each, the west and the east, um, with uh, obviously the, the group winners all moving on. East A, the Pacers. Oh, man, they're fun. They you, are you, you a like, lot you of fun. You like you some Pacers? Did, I like you, did you watch any of the Pacers-Hawks game? I did not. <laughs> I, I just turned it on in the fourth quarter in whatever city I was in at that point and yeah. uh and just electric stuff. It's great. No no one was trying to defend that hard. No one was missing a shot. It's like an um, all-star game. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh East B, uh the Bucks ended up winning. Um East C the Celtics. So like kind of predictable stuff here, except the Pacers uh, Instead of the Sixers, uh, that that was a little bit of a surprise. I That's think. That's significant. Sixers were third place in the group, in fact. Yeah. So, kind of crazy. Lakers win West A. LeBron's taking this seriously, my friend. LeBron wants to win this thing. You know it. West B, the Pellies. West C, the Kings, uh, which made for a really fun uh, end of group play game on mm-hmm. ESPN. That was I enjoyed the hell out of that game. Kings Warriors games have been great in oh, general yeah. this year so far, and the, the playoff series was fun too. Yeah, yeah. Draymond Green, as is Draymond Green's want, freaks out, mm-hmm. turns the game. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just it was his Draymond. first game back, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to love Draymond. That's Green. just poetic. I, um, it's, I just I just. Anyway, uh, all, right, all right, and then the two wild cards, uh, the Magic out of the East and the Warriors. No, oh, I'm sorry. Not, not the Warriors. I'm sorry, the Knicks out of the East. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. Knicks out of the East, Suns out of the West. Yeah. Uh, so wow, you went 0 for 2 in naming the teams that actually advanced, so I don't think that – I think that should, like, dock you on your predictions. <laughs> I wonder why you think that. I wonder why you're trying <laughs> the to... The magic in the wonder, warriors. <laughs> I wonder why you're trying to uh, to get that to... All right. Oh, it's because you picked the magic to be the wild card. Oh, that's why. As did Nikola Jokic. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Does he have a buddy on the magic? I bet you has a buddy on the magic. No, he literally said it was some NBA social media video and he picked the magic. Oh, I know. I, I, I saw it, yeah. yeah. I, saw it, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to get the motivation there. I feel like he's calculating enough that I, it, I think he just knows ball. 
All right. Have so. you considered that possibility <laughs> that Nikola Jokic? Yes, I have. <laughs> I have. All right. So Bennett picked uh, the Sixers. Um, that's wrong. Obviously, so we'll just ding you right there. It's a minus one. We're going to just add these up. Okay. We're going to add these We're up. We're going to make a pen mark between us. <laughs> the next one. I'm glad the listeners of the podcast can appreciate that. <laughs> East B, you had the Knicks. Uh, they I get did, a point. I get did, a point. You think you get a point? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's just predicting the Aaron, teams that made it through. Hey, Ron, we need a ruling. I think you. I predicted the Knicks like to make it through. Who cares? I think it's a plus two if you get one right. I agree. Plus two. Okay. I agree. All right, fine. Plus two. Plus two it is. Uh, Celtics. They they Obviously, they made it through. Yep. So that's a plus two right there. West A, you had the Lakers. Another plus two. Nice job. Nuggets. Wah, wah, minus one. West C, Thunder. Also a minus one. Wild Cards. Magic. Minus one. It was actually the Knicks who you... Predicted to win their group. Oh, yeah, they, the Knicks were the wild card. Yeah, but who cares? <laughs> okay, and it's then, eight out of thirty teams. Like, and and then know. the Warriors were your other wild card, which uh, they're they're not making it either. So we're gonna add that up. That's one, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna a, count something else real quick. You've got a plus one. So you've, I mean, I got three teams. Yeah, you got three teams. Yes, I should have taken Phoenix. I know. Yeah, to make it through, yeah, so that's that's okay. That was the obvious two teams are going to make it. Out. So here's my my picks: East yeah. A, Cavs minus one. East B, Heat. Ooh, that's that was close though. That was I don't know if you were watching. That one came down to the the end. Uh, the I wasn't watching that one. Yeah, no. them and the Bucks were were battling. Hmm. Uh, East C, Celtics got that one plus two. Their wild card Bucks. Um, we're going to call that a plus two since they're actually advancing under the rules that were established by Bennett. Uh, West A, Suns, we're also going to call that a plus two under the rules established by Bennett. Uh, Nuggets, that's a minus one. Kings, that's a plus two. Lakers, wild card, that's a plus two, again, under the rules established by Bennett. So that's three, two, four, six, eight, ten. That's a plus seven, my friend. Plus seven I'd, I'd to like to. plus one. I'm not a math major, but I think seven's greater than one by an order question. of seven. I wanted to ask the teams that you picked, what was their cumulative record in the group stage? I have no idea. I, I Don't make me do math. We're, we, I, we, we literally had somebody Mine were 17 and 11, math. so... Like I was pretty good still. Okay, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure if I added mine up, my, my teams just my teams just didn't care about point differential enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So out of that group, who do you think ends up winning? Uh, out of those eight, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think Boston's the best team, um, and they are fully healthy. But I, if I'm picking a team, I'm going to pick the Lakers. Um, I think. I think uh, LeBron's LeBron wants, motivated. I think LeBron wants to be known as the winner of the first in-season tournament. I think very much so. There's a there's a little bit of a you're hedging on on the future of this tournament right here being being a, a thing that people care about more. And and if we're talking 20 years down the line, and and we're comparing goat resumes of LeBron and Jordan and right. whoever and Wembenyama or something, yeah, uh, then. Then LeBron will have that little bullet point of winner of the first in season tournament on there. You know, I at, bet at you he actually, I bet 41. you he actually thinks that way too. I bet I, I would not be surprised at all. Never I think know. you know what? Let's see: Celtics, Bucks, Pacers. God, I, the Pacers in a in a one off situation are pretty tough. That is that, that is that game is really tough. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, they play the Celtics. Yeah, that is a yeah. That'll be a really fun game. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm going to say the Suns. Suns are going to win it. You've been just trashing on the Suns. I all know. Season. I know. Are you serious? I know. They've won me over. It's Devin Booker's back. He's making what plays, are you and Kevin Durant. About? Kevin Durant is playing his. This is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like infuriating. <laughs> you were so down on them. 
one game into the season because Durant looked washed on I know, opening I night. Know. Hey, listen, listen. You're, you're, you're going to find And then like my, a week later, you were like, like I think I'm out on the Suns fully You're, you're going you're gonna to find that my Suns' opinions uh, uh, can be somewhat emotional. <laughs> Tethered to emotion a little bit, maybe not always reasonable. It's just an outrage. Like... <laughs> Suns franchise needs banners more than LeBron's legacy needs this season <laughs> tournament win. That's so, so true, Aaron. And then Aaron's on. That's also on brand. Is, <laughs> is that Aaron? Aaron will take a shot. Aaron, who's uh, your pick? Uh, let's go, Kings. Nice. Wow, there's a wild card. They also need banners. Do they have any banners? They need something. <laughs> They've never they been to the finals. <laughs> like it's been a tough run. <laughs> <laughs> I I love their home games. By the way, they're so much fun. Uh, the 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 crowd is so into it. There's like an intensity to those games in that arena that is, I think, top notch. Yeah, not quite garden yeah. level, but certainly you know like that next level below the garden. The garden's number one. The beam does the beam not not elevate it above, above the, garden? the garden? No, <laughs> no. The, the difference with the garden is that when the players play there, you know they take it seriously. Like Michael Jordan in the garden, he was going to go all out every time he showed up. Same with LeBron. All those guys. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Moving on. I'm at. I'm up to thirteen arenas. By the way, I think thirteen. What's your favorite so far? Um, it's a good question. I should have been prepared with an answer. I actually <laughs> really liked Phoenix. Um, uh, for Game Six last season, that was yeah, that was a good venue. I would say that the Suns in that city are probably the number one franchise. Yeah, I think they are. Um, so many cities are NFL towns, but that's yeah. definitely an NBA town. Yeah, because they got the Cardinals, and the Cardinals were they moved from St. Louis to Arizona. Yeah. They weren't an established team. They were terrible for roughly two decades uh the suns have always been good maybe not great but always like competitive and yeah. in the playoffs suns and... aren't even their most recent team to make a championship series though so. oh, man. <laughs> yeah what's funny is that the diamondbacks are the only ones that have actually won a championship in that town and they still don't have much of a fan base phoenix is probably one diana of... tarasi and the phoenix mercury I think, oh that's true a, yes wmba wmba yeah. wow yes. yeah. Big slight on the goat. <laughs> on the goat. That's a tough look. <laughs> um, for, an, for a guy in an Arizona State hoodie right now. Listen, um, yeah, well. <laughs> and I reminded you that every time I've been there with pictures of those banners. That is that is true. That they, That is a quality WNBA franchise, by the way. They've, they've had really good players for a long, long time. Uh, mostly just they've had Diana Taurasi. And if you have her, you have a chance to win. Brittany Griner's decent. Yeah, yeah. She's not Diana Taurasi, though. Diana Taurasi is like, I don't know, top. you're talking like top three all time. Like They've got Sophie there. Cunningham, M-I-Z. There you go. Phoenix, I liked Miami, and I liked Detroit a lot. Miami, Miami and De- Miami, I don't know. It, it was the closest thing to like an old college basketball barn that the NBA has almost. We, like... It just felt slightly older, like being down around court level and, and hmm. everything. Like I don't know, hmm. I don't know if if I'm like but the fan base Aaron. is like so. Meh. Yeah, that's tough. But also, it was the NBA Finals, so yeah. right. like you were gonna get a good atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, th- this is the fan base that famously left Game Six yeah. of the NBA yeah. Finals. I know, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's tough. St. Louis would never in 2011 for the for the Cards. <laughs> no. No, Just they're saying. sticking around. I, I do think some people left, <laughs> <laughs> but not as many as Miami. Um, uh, Detroit, honestly, is um, just like way too nice of an arena for the team that plays there. It's it's just like the funniest ratio of venue quality to performance. Well, they were playing in the suburbs forever, um, mm. and and now they're downtown. Um, they. It it just feels like it's a Red Wings town. Even despite like the Pistons' success through the years, they've just never been able to grab that city like the Red Wings. Aaron, you have something to say? Yeah, I like San Antone. <laughs> Old Wyoming boy, I love livestock on site. <laughs> I've uh I haven't been to San Antone yet. It's for... so fun. Yeah. It's a vibe. 
I mean, like the arena, you mean? The arena's I know fun. The city's it's great. in a stockyard. It's literally in a stockyard. That's cool. So Sounds awesome. Not a bad deal. But but they're not allowed to boo opposing players there. So No, they're very so that Yeah, allowed. that was something, that wasn't it? <laughs> Greg, Greg Popovich pulling, you know, there was a, there's a very famous, oh, for people my age, the uh, the the old boomer community, the old millennial, that could be mistaken for a boomer. Um, You're millennial, not Gen X. Yeah, I'm a millennial. What year were you born? 1981. It starts. That's not it's, millennial. Yes, it That's is. That's not yes. possible either. Because yeah. millennial like cuts off no, it, narrowly. It, it, it's, supposed, it's supposed to be 1980. Is is it's it begins in 1980. Trust me, I've looked it up. I don't claim to be a millennial. He's very insistent on, on being a millennial. I would. I, I consider myself more Gen X. I was the youngest of a bunch of siblings that were all Gen X. But what, what can you say? By the numbers, I'm supposed to be a millennial. I, you this, sound like you're trying to convince nope. yourself. <laughs> 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 I, I do. I so, seriously do not care. Um, I, but you, you, you. So. The original point I was trying to make before you tripped me up, <laughs> Sam Weish in uh, in Cincinnati, way, way, way back in the day. This we're talking about the eighties. So you you were your parents might not even have met, um, and uh, he they, grabs, they met in Vegas. They met in Vegas really? at the in season tournament. <laughs> <laughs> back when it was at its peak in the nineties. Oh, it was. <laughs> Yeah, though, man, those great in-season tournament games of the 90s. Um, so uh, he grabs the mic because they were, I believe, throwing things at players. And this was in the old wow. stadium in Cincinnati. And he yells at the fans and he says, basically, you shouldn't be doing this. This isn't Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's one of the – it re- very much reminded me of that. Anyway, sorry about the aside. Um, I, I – Sort of slightly uh, started leaning in your direction on on the pop takes after that moment. By the way. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I glad. I'm glad we're we're starting to be. I was like of uh, the same mind there. Yeah, that's just tough. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big pop guy. Let it I'm, go. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, before we get into our next topic, uh, the center draft. Um, and, uh, oh, you know what? One thing before we take a break. I just want to talk about this real quick. Jamal's comeback, mm-hmm. uh, his return, um, returned last night. The, the Nuggets dominated that game from the start. Uh, immediately. Not defensively, really. I mean, they, no, they let Houston stay in it. But they were in control. Like, at no point were they not in control of that game. Yeah. Um, immediately hurts his ankle. <laughs> like, and that's like a huge like oh my god we're really that quickly within but, two minutes but yeah. he you know continues to play and everything like that do you, do you feel like i'm, I'm kind of getting the sense that it's going to be a season like this for him where it, it's you know i don't know i mean he just turned his ankle it was sort of a bad luck right thing that happened right, right. but these things like you get hurt once and it just sort of like it never no quite i goes mean it, away yeah and, yeah it's it's you know. always possible um i I don't know if it would be the worst idea to give him an every other game sort of situation still for a few games here. Just like no back to backs, you can't do the second of a back to back or the front for, end. There whichever. are two road back to backs coming up with Phoenix, Sacramento, and then Atlanta, Chicago, um, like in the next week and a half. Think about the hamstring injury; it was on the second part of a back to back, and he had played a ton. Against Dallas the night before. 39 so, minutes, I believe. Yes. So, yeah, maybe take it easy on the back-to-backs at least. Um, that, But that also goes against the other thing that we talked about at, you know, ad nauseum. Um, chasing all NBA. Like, you do that, you're probably He might already goodbye. be in trouble a little bit. I, I, think, so, I think there's no um, doubt about that looking yeah, at his numbers. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if he's going to make the push. I will say, like, when he sort of got cooking last night again his pocket passing was so good it's crazy i feel like, like his is, passing has gone up another he level. is so confident with it right now like there was there was one on a drive and um it where it was sort of like in rhythm with his own dribble almost the the way he was able to bounce it through traffic to to Jokic. um it really has gone up a level and like he i feel like he's feeling himself a little bit in that yeah 
particular area, but um, but yeah, he's got to be healthy to be able to do that. So right, yeah, he's got to be healthy. He's also not shooting it particularly well. No, um, I think although he's he did on... make a half court shot right yeah. after the ankle turn. Yes, so. correct, <laughs> correct. Which is like okay, things are fine. Um, yeah, I think he's like at forty three percent right now, which. Uh, you know, he's going to have to. Where, where'd you get that number? 43%? Yeah. I I want to say it was... Is it oh, 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 I'm I'm so sorry. I, th- I thought you were... Uh, I, I didn't think you were talking about his shooting percentage. Oh, no, I, no, no, I no, thought you were no. like conjuring a number for oh, like hate, where he's at health wise. I hate like, when people do. Yeah, he's probably around 43%. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, 73. Yeah. yeah, he's just... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I hate that stuff. Anyway, um... <laughs> Yeah, he's shooting forty three percent for the season. Like, yeah, he's going to have to do better than that. Yes, um, but you know he's a notoriously slow starter. This is why he's never made an all star team. Is the slow starts that he usually has to start a season. Um, so maybe he cranks it up. Maybe you know he gets into December and cranks it up, and we're right back where he needs to be. Yeah, he. Uh, you know, I I don't I don't think it's going to be a massive concern ultimately. Like. Just don't be stupid is sort of the, you know. Big picture. R- right approach with it. Um, yeah, be be careful, especially if he's going to feel a little ginger on his ankle for a couple days now. Right. Like, just, and, just be careful. And you have to be pretty confident at this point that you have somebody that can fill in for him mm-hmm. in need be if you want to be competitive in the game. Yeah. Uh, real quick, by the way. So what's interesting is – uh, I think the bench ended up missing Reggie as much as the starters missed Jamal over these no 11 doubt. games because um, there's about a week of Colin Gillespie, then about a week of Jalen Pickett, um, and then toward the end of the Murray absence, the Nuggets were basically playing without a backup true point guard, um, and they were having Christian Brown sort of initiate a little bit more that's not Um, that's not his game yeah no uh they just they went away from it pretty much and part of that i think was sort of malone's pent-up frustrations with the bench over the course of the road trip um as the team was losing and losing uh so i don't know it's just interesting that uh that it played out like that by the way um just a random lineup that uh I kind of like, and I'm trying to think if it even has appeared in like more than one game right now. But uh, Jokic, KCP, um, MPJ, Strother, and Christian Brown. Um, so four wings and Jokic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's... Okay. I, so. You know, Michael Malone loves him a wing, by the way. He does. That's, he that's really his does. Center full and the position. thing about that lineup is you have uh your two best three point shooters probably in or what's supposed to be your two best three point shooters. Three best really, with uh MPJ Strother and KCP, your two best backcourt defenders in KCP and Brown and Nikola Jokic. Yeah. Um and uh, and he's funny. kind of the point guard for that in that situation. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And like, so I don't know if you're going to go without a point guard. Like, like I sort of like a lineup like that um, that sure. gets a little saucier with, with a bunch of wings and stuff. Um, so I don't know. It was just a thought I had. I uh, it's again we've talked about this a little. They're a team that doesn't really need a true point guard necessarily if. Jamal's out like they can survive right because of Jokic yeah yeah um you just have to make sure that you're sort of staggering it the right way um yeah. so I don't know it's interesting um they ended up having MPJ play the four um the last couple games with Gordon out just sort of a mild heel thing for him so um I like him at the four by the way I do too yeah I think he works at the four yeah Still a decent Jokic rebounder. says there is no difference. <laughs> <laughs> I love Nicola. Yeah. That was such fun. Anyway, well, all right, wait. Well, let's uh, let's take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to dra- draft the NBA centers. Hey there everyone. Just wanted to let you know for the Nugget fan in your life or maybe for yourself. We've got a book on the championship season that was for the Denver Nuggets. They're hanging a banner. We're selling books. The book is gold standard. 
how the Denver Nuggets won their first NBA championship, all sorts of great stories and photos. It is the gift that keeps on giving. If you got a Nuggets fan in your life, Hanukkah, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Boxing Day, it fits every occasion. Find it at local bookstores near you or online at denverpost.com. And we are back after a fun little 90s basketball discussion. Just, uh, I don't know, a few minutes of talking 90s hoops. I love talking 90s hoops. What do you think, A.A. Ron? Best time for the NBA. It was back in my prime. So (laughs) It was devastating to hear that Bennett missed all of it. Born in 99. Didn't see a single one of those games. And the early 2000s. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. (laughs) That was, I I think the early 2000s was okay. Uh, I think if you're talking about like, NBA, height of NBA, it's from like about 91 to, like you said, 96, 98, uh, the end of the, the Bulls run. Like there, and that was led into by Magic Bird. You're talking 80s. popularity, not yeah, popularity. overall quality. No, no, no. The, the now is the quality is, is now better than ever, but the, the, the level of popularity of the NBA in the 90s is unmatched. It was it was uh, it was like challenging the NFL and something. No, yeah, I I'm telling you, I remember it, man. That's uh, <laughs> okay. Settling in on the couch for have a little milk, watch a game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we uh, we've hyped it up. The NBA center draft. Um, have we? By by the way, I I meant to say um, the. The lineup that I want to see I was something that I thought of when they had that version of the lineup out there with Aaron Gordon instead of Jokic. It was Gordon at the five. And I was like, I'd like to see this with Gord- uh, with Jokic, actually. Okay. But anyway, just wanted to, All right. to clarify my, my feelings. Glad we got that in there. Yeah. Thank you. Centers. See? <laughs> yeah. Segway. NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great podcasting. Um, all right. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to have all three of us, myself, Bennett, A.A. Ron, going to draft. We're going to do this snake style. Snake style draft. We're going to have 10 rounds. So we get to 30. 30. Oh, wow. I thought we were going to do like five or six. No, we're going to get like a starting five and a bench player. I had only drafted 15 slots on this text document. Oh, all right. Well, what, if we, what if we do six rounds? Six rounds? That's 18. You're going more than half of the league's. All right. All right. Six rounds it is. Um, you Again, get... great podcasting. This is <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> we decided we were going to make the rules as we went, right? Yes, that's so... right. Yeah, just make it up on the fly. Yeah, uh, so you you have a starting five of centers. You will be judged on who would be the best shooting guard of your <laughs> centers. <laughs> that, that that's definitely not how we're doing this. Um, okay, so um, a- Aaron, who's picking first? You got to randomize here. Yeah. Yeah, let me roll this dice real quick. It looks like Bennett's going first. <laughs> okay. And second? Uh, let's go Matt. All right. Wow, you want third? Well, he gets snakes, so that means Did he you? gets two. He just he just talked himself into getting the snake two picks in a row situation. I think two, Mamba is, mentality. I think two is the worst spot to pick. <laughs> yes. Yes, um. I got screwed over. Thanks a lot. Um, so, all right. I mean, I think we know who's going number one, but I don't know. Maybe Bennett gets a wild hair up his behind. Yeah, man. Uh, Mitchell Robinson. Let's go. (laughs) Uh, I'll take Nikola Jokic, I think. All uh, right. The number number one one. pick. Hmm. Uh, He is, by the way, sort of like, I mean, he's like in the, uh, he's in like a triple crown sort of territory right now with with points, rebounds, assists. He's he's not going to beat Halliburton in assists. He's probably not going to be quite at the top in scoring, but he is right uh, near the top. In what was it, 32, 15, and 10 last night? Um, yes, no turnovers. It was his third career. Unbelievable. 30-point uh, triple-double with no turnovers, which had only been done once other than Jokic in the last 40 years. You ever watch him and think like he's just sort of toying around, like just kind of seeing? There, there are occasionally moments where I'm – wondering if he wants it to look easier and or if he's just like yeah what can i do with this i right. it, it's that was one of his more impressive stat lines the 15 assists for sure um he had one that was like uh almost like a t- 
touch pass. I kept hearing multiple people, including our own Patrick Saunders, describing it as a volleyball pass out of the out of the yes. post to Justin Holiday on yeah. the opposite wing for a three. It was just he's great with those. Just that, that's that's one of the ones that he's just fantastic. With. Guys, I think he might be the best center in in the league. Oh, you think so, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Unbelievable, okay. right? Wow, what a hot take. Uh, I think I'm going to take him number one <laughs> overall in this draft. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's my turn. Uh, I'm going to – Yeah. you know what? I'm, why make it – I'm just going to make it simple. It's Joel Embiid. It's, uh, Man, you could have – Yeah, no, I'm not doing Bam. I, you, I think Bam could have been – You could have allowed this – podcast to circulate into philadelphia audiences though <laughs> and like if you really wanted clout you could have done well the okay how about how about, how about i thing. do this how about i do this you, you made the right pick well but, but let me do the philly thing if we're if i'm gonna somehow you know get into the philly radar i am now convinced there's no way Embiid ever catches nicole Jokic as being in some sort of in like an debate. all-time list yeah yeah like that, that yeah, that's I think, done i don't i don't that's, think that's, that's over, a conversation right? Um, I mean, if he wins a championship, then then maybe but he's not. I mean, he's not <laughs> even getting out of the East. Let's face it; like they don't have the team to get out of the East. It's it's either the Bucks or the Celtics. They're better now than they were at the start of the season, though. I agree. They traded so. James Harden, so you're automatically better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I I will go Joel Embiid number two. A, a- Ron, you've got two choices because of the snake draft. I I like how you how you finagled that I'll, tra- I'll trade you one of the picks if it's that big a deal what what am i getting what do i have to give up though i'll just get one of your second round picks that's a terrible trade the for measly <laughs> the <laughs> me- what, are, what is the <laughs> offer here yeah. the, the measly middle pick um uh i'll take bam bam okay yeah bam was i i had f- just uh, for one second sort of uh considered taking him over joel Embiid, but i i don't think you can Smooth shot. Great passer, too. Yeah, great passer. Filling up the stat sheet. It's a good pick. Yeah, it's a solid pick. So what? This is, where, this is where it gets fun. Uh, I'm going to take the greatest shooting big man ever, Carl Anthony Towns. Wow. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I want to fill up the stat sheet. Cat? Right? Whoa. You're taking Cat? He's second in defensive rating. Is he even not the, the best center on his team? I was about to say, is he even the best center on his team? I think there'll be room to get Rudy later. Yeah, I mean, cow. there might be. We'll see. <laughs> uh, you know that Matt's a hater, so I guess you're going for the you're, – you're rolling the dice with that pick. We can't all go chalk, you know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. I, I There were a few names I – that were sort of in my mind is uh, I wonder which one Aaron will take and Cat was not one of the names. No. So. Okay, here's here's another question I have for this. Are we for this center draft? Is this like uh, just this season or is this into the future? Or I probably should have. Well, if I would have known that, I wouldn't have taken Cat. <laughs> well, it's too bad now because you already did it. Um, I think I think we can mainly talk right now. Okay. But we can't ignore the future. You know? So you're straddling both lines here. You're, you're not really making a decision. There. I think it'll depend on how the draft plays out <laughs> <laughs> and what my picks are. <laughs> okay. Well, I think, I think we're talking a now first now, mentality. Now first. With like, uh, we don't, we don't have to judge more than like three to five years down the road, you know? Okay. So like, we're not, we're not crucifying Aaron because Cat, We'll be gone little, in 10 years. League, you know, like, league and yeah. five le- 40% three-point shooter. Show me another center who does it. What else does he do? Does he do anything else? I think he has a polite demeanor. <laughs> <laughs> you need that in the locker room. Um, okay. All right. You know what? I'm doing it. Victor Wembanyama. Oh, my god! I'm doing it. I thought I was guaranteed to have him with one of those two picks. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm not. No, I'm taking. He's been. He's had some really good games. He's had some really bad games too. We haven't talked about his game against the Nuggets, but uh, he's pretty good. He had six steals and four blocks. Pretty good. That's uh, that's a good game. Just like post entry was was extremely difficult for Denver. Anytime he was on the floor, it was yeah. crazy. Yeah, he's um, like defensively, he's already there. He's yeah. already a great defender, and as soon as he puts it together on the offensive end consistently, like, come on, most most entertaining uh, team to to blow out 
in the league by far right now. Yeah, they're up there. Yeah, because yeah, he's yeah he's just fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, and he took two in a row against the Suns. Um, he was fantastic. He had over forty points in one of those games. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah, I'm doing it. All right. That sort of threw me off. Uh, wow. I'm I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> borderline rattled by that right. as a, the fifth well, you've, pick you've got two you've got two i've got two i'm debating between a couple we don't need to we're not actually like judging this by our group of centers as a team are we like what you mean so somebody has to be the point players guard? players on the floor together well you are a win then because you have nikola Jokic and he can be a point guard and there's literally no other center in the league that can be a point guard um but yeah. So the answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> we are not. Uh, because I want to take Sabonis. Are you taking Sabonis? Yeah, I'm taking him. But uh, I'm all I'm saying, the reason I asked was because Jokic and Sabonis, you know, that's a little awkward. Can I, let me just say this. Uh, I, I still got PTSD from that playoff series last year. Oh. He was not good. Not good. Now, I know he was supposedly hurt uh, in that series. And that's part of the reason for that. But I have yet to see him do it in the postseason, even when he was with the Pacers and they'd make the postseason. He was okay. Uh, and he, OKC, they just didn't know how to use him. Hard to judge judge what he did with OKC in the playoffs. But I that, that series, he was so ordinary that uh, I just, I don't know, I have to, I can't forget about it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Just tossing that aside, huh? Um, I I like Sabonis a lot, and I like uh, I like the Sacramento Kings a lot. So yeah, lefty post player who's got that going for him. I know, I know. I, I like that. Um, I need I need some defense. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'm stuck between a couple of guys who are I think are probably the clear next two guys. Um, but. But I also don't know what Matt will do. I'm trying to. I'm trying to to game this. And I already think. know who I'm taking. If you if you who, the, I know who I'm going to take. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take Anthony Davis. Thank you, Anthony Davis. You think? Uh, are you buying him staying on the court as much as he had so far? Um, I I we're not we're not judging this draft by health are we that's part of the package i guess but like that's part that's i mean if anthony davis is always healthy then he's like maybe the third pick in this draft okay. if not the second yeah you, you don't agree with that yeah no I, I i don't know but also it's like not always reliable offensively that's part, part of the, the health th- equation though that's not necessarily part of the health equation this happens when he's fully healthy it's happened this year that's true Remember when he didn't score in the second half against the yes, Nuggets? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> was that because he was hurt? But no. he's also he's also a fantastic defender when healthy. Yes, um, and that never goes away. Yes, um, yeah. I, I mean that's a that's a steal for a third pick. I think so. Yeah, that's not bad. Chris Stapps Porzingis. Okay, that's who I'm going with. Wow, I love me some Chris. I, I like him a lot too. Are you buying that he stays healthy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But I'll say this. He fits that Celtics team so well. He is like – I I love it. Exactly I, what they needed. Yeah. And pretty darn good shot blocker. And the, the thing mm-hmm. that has changed with him uh, compared to his days in Dallas, he now has a post game. When he was with Dallas, like they used to try to feed him in the post and he just didn't know what to do with it. But now if you switch a small guy on him, he just – Bullies you down low, and yep. he can always shoot over you. Yep, he's just that big. Um, adding that has been like a game changer for him. Uh, he's I, I love that guy's game. You're up, Aaron. Uh, I'll take the value pick, uh, Rudy Gobert. <laughs> All yours, buddy. We're, we're just All yours. <laughs> building the Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> <laughs> they got a third center on the roster. I can't I'll grab believe him too. that worked out. Nas Reed. I'll take him. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was wondering. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nas Reed. No, you're not actually. Right? No, I, I am not <laughs> taking Nas Reed. Matt, Matt was about to start writing I was, it. <laughs> I was putting it down. Too yes. late. You already picked him. <laughs> uh, I'll take baby Jokic. Woo! I, I need, mean, I think 
do, can we stop with the baby Jokic stuff with him? I'm sorry. Why? Because he's not. He dominated the Turkish leagues as a boy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that into account. I like that. Alperin Shingun. I, I think he's good. I think he's a good player. Uh, I think he has wouldn't, almost zero athleticism. Wouldn't you? Are, I mean, that's what people said about Jokic. Like, <laughs> that's true. But Jokic had it was, and it was obvious from the start. Basketball skill, like serious basketball skill, making passes nobody had seen ever from a center, and that was immediately upon entering the NBA. Aaron, you can back me up on that. I agree. Uh, not seeing that with my boy Shengun. He does not have the skill, the the uh, the skill array that uh, Jokic immediately. Definitely not the, the array, but like he can make some of the same passes. Yeah, he's he, some of them. I, it's wouldn't wouldn't you? He's twenty one years old right now. Wouldn't you argue that like if he becomes half of what Jokic is, that's like a wildly successful player. Sure, and a wildly successful center. And so I'm okay with a little bit of like. Like future factoring in on this thing for, for so Aaron's he, pick. he could be young Sabonis. Sure. Yeah, I think Sabonis is the more apt. Yeah. yeah. If you're if you're gonna do baby somebody, baby Sabonis. Let's let's not disrespect Nikola Jokic by by calling him baby Nikola Jokic. Do you like Shingun's flamingo shot? That's his Sambor shuffle. <laughs> it's not as not as effective. You don't dig it? <laughs> Not a one-legged guy? <laughs> it's, well, it looks kind of forced. Like, there's like no but functional reason. <laughs> like, what, what is the reason for it? Like, why are you doing it? I don't know. It's just his natural form. The Sambor like, shuffle, it makes sense. It's like, I'm going to create space and, and shoot uh, in a way that you can never block this shot. You're, you're kicking out the leg. You're creating space that way, aren't Karate you? Karate kidding. <laughs> your defender. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, know I, I think it's a little early for Shingun, but I respect the pick. I like having him on the roster. It, Aaron, I, saw, I saw a stat that Matt might like. Uh, raw stats are his kind of avenue. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Sangoon in the first three seasons is the first player to average uh, 21, 8, and 5. So, you know, that's kind of nice. That is kind of nice. Nice to have an obscure stat on the roster. Good for him. I mean, wait, how many of those games did they win? I mean, come on. Um, I, I didn't know we were trying to win games. I thought we were trying to, to accumulate draft. counting uh, stats. I can't believe you're a hater. Of, <laughs> like I feel like you just, I don't know. I think he's fine. I just, I Jokic comparisons. I it's like Michael Jordan comparisons. I, I don't want it to happen until it's actually appropriate. He was MVP of the Turkish league when he was 18. Is that's that's, a, that's that is what I'm good. Saying. It's a, a good league. He was a boy putting up. Man stats. That's crazy. That's, yeah. yeah. And that's like a, he's on the come up. And that's probably he's, he's probably I, I know everyone's probably the third or fourth best European league. It's uh, that's a decent league. Everyone's sort of pointing to the veterans in Houston sort of for the reasoning for them marginally overachieving so far, especially at home. But I think his progress is probably the defining factor for them right now. Sure. And they can sort of run an offense around him, which sounds familiar to me. And look how much talking has been done about him just in this one pick. Yeah, well. He's getting a lot of face This is definitely, there. Matt and I have definitely been a bit more chalk while Aaron is going galaxy brain with his picks for sure. I'm building a 2K team. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to cheat code the three-pointers and all, all right. the other stuff you can do. So, hmm, there's two guys that I'm thinking about here. Um, you know what? Jonas Valanciunas, I'm doing it. Wow. wow. I love me some tough guy. I like Valanciunas, too. I like uh, a guy who throws it. You, like, he, he gets I talked the ball with in the him post. a bit in New Orleans. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. What, did uh, you have to, what did you have to say? We were just talking about good old classic big guy physical post battles with him and Jokic. And he is. He is. The at the apex of that. He absolutely is. I don't think he is the... 10th best? Uh, what what pick is that? Uh, we're, we're now at uh, 11. Where does he rank amongst? I don't know if he's the 11th best center in the league. But. I like his physicality. He's a t Getting him off of the boards is a chore. A ser he will wear you out over 40 minutes just getting rebounds. Um, Third best Lithuanian center ever, maybe? Behind the Sabonis? Uh... I mean, the the first Sabonis, that guy, 
was amazing. Uh, another player that unfortunately our our man Benny Benito did not get to watch, but uh, an, ama- an amazing player. Better than Ogowskis? Oh, I, I was never a big Ogowskis guy <laughs> personally. He was so immobile. Um, Affected by injuries, no doubt. Uh, and and also, uh, Arvita Sabonis, by the time he gave him to the NBA, had been affected by injuries, too. Uh, the Iron Curtain notoriously kept him from coming to the NBA uh, until he had been sapped of some of his athleticism. But what a player. What a passer, too. A fantastic yeah. passer. All right. I'm really surprised you picked Valanciunas. Um, because, like, I mean, thank you. I'm, I'm going to take Chet. Uh, We're calling Chet a center. Yeah, I think we agreed upon that handshake deal before the the draft. Does he play center on his own team? Have you been Have you been drafting under the idea that he is not qualified for this? No, I really hadn't thought about him all that much to be honest. He's a good player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He is. He is. I'm like, did, if, if he's not, he wasn't even my next on the board. Really? Uh, no. No. Um, I'm. I want some of that length. I want that attack off the bounce on my team um, to go with uh, to go with you know the Jokic Sabonis style and then the defense of of uh, AD. I think you you add someone who who's just going to attack from the perimeter now and um, has a pretty good handle. Obviously, has the length, good rim protector. Um, yeah, give me give me Chet. That's a future pick. I I think as well. So you got another pick. I know. Um, I just, I just don't appreciate you being skeptical of my Chet Holmgren pick. Uh, no, I got no, nothing wrong he with He needs Chet. to get a little fatter, for sure. Yes, uh, yes. And, um, yeah, the, Chet, Chet, has, Chet and Victor Wimbanyama have – I have the same concern with both, is that their bodies – that body type just rarely holds up to the rigors of the NBA. Um, but we shall see. I'm not totally sure what to do with my next pick. Um, I, I know who I'm going to take. Really? Yep. Really? Do you now? That scares me because now I'm overthinking this. Um, Jakob Poto still out there? He is. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late. Um, oh, oh man, this is tough. This is tough. What What's your ideal type of center? Is it the physical old school? No, no. I, I don't have an ideal type of anything. I, I, I think, you know, I just want effective effective play. Uh, do you bring something to the table? Uh, can you hang on the defensive end outside of that? Centers come in all shapes and sizes now. I, I would not have imagined Nikola Jokic uh, 15 years ago. That's not a player I would have thought would exist in the world. But same with Victor Wembanyama and, and Chet Holmgren. I'm going to cancel out. The uh, the age thing with Chet um, uh, by going with Brooke Lopez. No! <laughs> I hope that sound was audible in the Damn microphone. <laughs> I was eyeing Brooke for a while. <laughs> it, was, it was between Brooke and, and one other guy. So I was I, I was... Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Matt just... Recoiled and threw his pen on the ground. <laughs> Can you grab I've my pen, please? Never seen a re- <laughs> I hope you take daily aspirin. Your, your heart's in a bad way. <laughs> I've never seen a reaction like that. I really, I really wanted Brooke. I really wanted Brooke. I wanted. He said he has an ideal nothing, but we just found out it's Brooke Lopez. <laughs> yeah. That's his ideal player. <laughs> wow. Oh man. I love me some Brooke Lopez. I was, if I'm being honest, as I was trying to make my decision, I, <laughs> the thing that crossed my mind was, I think Matt's going Brooke. <laughs> 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 After Valanchunas, absolutely. <laughs> Brooke Lopez. Uh, well, Brooke, he can shoot it, though. He can. And a uh, good defender. I think his percentage is a little down right now. Yeah, so, but, but I, I think fine. he's sort of proven over the last few yeah. years that he's a dependable three point outstanding shooter. defender. Yeah, good. Good low post good score too. Yep. He, I mean, it's funny. He's he, been all reliable for when he was with the Nets. He was like almost a completely different player. Mm. Almost all low block, high post stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, and and now has turned into something completely 
different from that. He loves the corner three. Loves it. And it works for what the Milwaukee Bucks want to no, do. No, it totally does, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, like, sometimes you just can't have a big sitting down on the lower block when Giannis is going downhill. Yes, yes. So, like, when he's attacking the basket. <laughs> exactly. yes, you need to open up the lane. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay. All right. Well, if that's the case, I'm going Jared Allen. That was the other one I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was considering. Yeah. yeah that's, that, it was, I own both of those, and, and uh, I figured – yeah, I like Jared Allen. He's uh, limited offensively, but um, he's a good player. Yeah, you know, uh, I didn't even think of this until just now. But uh, are we considering Cavs' other big man a center? Because I, uh, I don't. I consider him a four. Uh, I think you could play him at center. I think yeah. there's a there's a guy. Why can't I think of his name right now? Mobley. Uh, yeah, Mobley. Uh, Mobley. I think there's a there is a part of his career where he will be playing center. Yeah, I think that happens. No, I think that's fair. And I but, like him. Um, and like, the, yeah, I, d- I think of him as more of a four. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I guess I wouldn't be. I mean, seven feet tall. Appalled by anyone picking him. Like if, if Aaron wants to steal him now. <laughs> I would be annoyed if it came back to Matt and, and Matt <laughs> took him. But All right. You got two picks, A.A. Ron. How, we're, or are we rotating into our last round now? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, this we're, is this is, we're down to our. You last get few two, picks. and then we both get one. Yep, yep. Okay, I think that's how it's going to work. I uh, love my team right now. I like my team a lot. Could I get Jaron Jackson Jr.? Uh, I don't Basketball think... Reference has him listed as a, a two sport or a two position <sighs> guy, and I'm desperate know. right now. There's a reason after Jared <laughs> Allen went off the board, it was uh, <laughs> there's a drop. I think there's, yeah, a, there's a big drop. I I sort of had a. I had my little hastily thrown together draft board and then a dot, 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 dot after Jared Allen with, with the ensuing names. Yeah, my, my team's about to fall apart more so. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Triple J. He's kind of a center. I, I, I can see it in many ways like Mobley could be a center. At some point in his career, he will be a center. That will happen. I think we're cheating a little bit. Like Memphis went out and had to go sign new centers because of Steven Adams' injury. That's correct. That's, All right, then he's okay. he's off the board. All right, who who we got? Oh wow. Um let me get Miles Turner. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you're really excited oh, yeah. about that pick. <laughs> I love it. I think that's the right pick. That, that one comes down to I just really like that he spells his name with a Y instead of an I in that that second slot. Well, you know, so Stylish. for somebody who yes, you know, if your first name is two capital A's. That's correct. <laughs> I, I like a stylish spelling of a name, you know. I, think uh, it, I do not, by the way. I just want to go on record as saying I don't. It develops character. It does it? I don't know. How many different Michaelas I've come across in my life? What? The, the different spellings of Michaela that has never been something that you have encountered. There's like, I don't know, 25 different ways to spell Michaela. Okay. Yeah. I don't like it. Hot take. Not a fan. That's that's something the uh, my inner boomer totally rejects. What do you think of one T mats? Oh, that's no, <laughs> no. We're not. We, we don't go there. We not don't, an Ishbia guy. No, no. We double T it here. In fact, I I like brought, I brought that up in a podcast around that Ishbia. Really, really. That, yes, that you kind of can't trust him because he's a one T mat. Do you prefer the names to come from the apostles, something like that? I mean, if you're going biblical, you you might as well you know do it right. You might as well spell it correctly. I I don't know. That's a bar. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback to the NBA Finals when Matt didn't know what the phrase "bar" <laughs> meant in like the colloquial young person Listen, sense. I'm not hip. All right, I'm I'm not hip at all. Aaron, you got another pick. I'm you're, a double you're just T stalling guy too, by there. the way. I yeah. am stalling. Uh, we could go seven if you guys want. I'm sort no, of having fun with this. No, I think it's six. We're going six. But but the more I think about it, the funnier it is when you have to to. I think I know pick who I'm the picking. scrubs th- at this point. I think I know who I'm picking. Um, I hope I so much. I hope that you steal Matt's pick. I'm going with a project here. Someone I think that can develop oh, long term. Okay. 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 Uh DeAndre eight. Yeah, I wondered. I wondered. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's heart just exploded. I was be... going to take him with the last pick, too. <laughs> I, I was eyeballing him for a while. I was he's like... had some really fine moments. 
he, and some a lot more. The the Suns run to moments. the finals. He was actually legitimately good that in one, that in that run. Yeah, to the he finals. was Andrew he was. Bynum two point It's absolutely a project. You're you're right about that. He um, can like he has the tools. I don't think, don't, he, it's it's yeah. the, he doesn't have the motor. He doesn't have the desire and the, the and work the, ethic the, has yes. been questioned for a while, hasn't yes. it? Yeah. He just he's not consistently yeah. good. He'll every now and then he'll be like, oh wow, I didn't know he could do that, but. It's just not often enough. That's the problem with him. Yeah, he's on the all body team. He's got all the physical oh, yeah. characteristics you need. Just and none of the other stuff. I mean, if you want to go back to that draft, I mean, two two really big mistakes. Atlanta trading for uh, Trey Young over Luka Doncic, <laughs> and the Suns drafting DeAndre Ayton over yeah. Luka Doncic. I mean, come on, two massive errors. And the thing is, is it was kind of obvious in real time that those were errors. One of them looks really terrible. That's yes. one of the more interesting like redraft years, I think, for sure. Yeah. Can you imagine Devin Booker and Luka Doncic on the same team? Yeah, that would be a little ridiculous. That would be one hell of a backcourt. I mean, how do you deal with that? But no. They... Is that 18, 2018? Sounds about right. It sounds about right. It's yeah. the MPJ year, too. Yeah, yes, and he when fell. He was a projected potential number one guy and, before his college and that was so. another one where in real time it was like why do these I, I get he has health concerns but like you're taking swings on all these other guys like, i know i know yeah he seems worth it to me mm-hmm. <laughs> he has the tools he was like considered the best prospect just like 10 months ago uh th- that that's one of the nuggets that they've they've done a lot of really savvy things drafting jamal murray where they drafted him obviously drafting nicole Jokic, although that's more a st- that's luck. a stroke of luck. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. more luck. I, one of my biggest pet peeves is is when people act like they were just like absolutely gaming the system the whole time. They had picks before that in yes, that draft. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, and and if you if you knew what he was going to be, yeah. you're I, taking I'm pretty him with sure the first Tim Connolly has like said on the record yes. multiple times that that we got some lucky scouting. And, like, <laughs> yeah, that out. that <laughs> one. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, now I got to find Man, that it. time it was more of like a repressed grunt from Matt <laughs> as opposed to like the squeal when I when I took Lopez. <laughs> hmm. Well done, Aaron. <laughs> Let me see. Try here. to get him one more time on the back end. That's why I sort of wanted to go 7. <laughs> um, you know what? He shouldn't have drafted in the middle maybe. He could get revenge maybe. Uh, I, no, I don't really have anyone I feel that hmm. loyal to at this point. Gosh, this is tough. There's not a lot left. This is this is really getting difficult. You got your uh, Sun Center on there. I know. What about your guy, Yusef Nurkic? I'm not. No, it's I, he's fine. He's a fine player. He's been sort of better than I expected so far. Yeah, yeah. But he's I, again consistency. That's the thing about him. It's. it's I the, really respected him in that playoff run when yeah, his that's why l- you t- leg exploded, <laughs> and then like a week later, I saw him walking around uh, <laughs> the arena in Portland. <laughs> Jeez. Just came back from it. No big deal. <laughs> Exploded. <laughs> All right. I think it was an audible explosion when it when it gave way. <laughs> okay, so um you know what injury sound effects. There's two guys I'm looking at and I'm not I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Mo Wagner. 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 Thank you so much. Um, I thought I thought you were going to take my guy for revenge at the end. Um, I'm, I'm taking Kessler as my sixth man. Oh, that's not a bad one, actually. He's thir- third among centers in blocks per game right now, and it's not like he's playing as many minutes as, he, as he some got, of the other guys. Like, his blocks per 48 are probably He had a nice one really on Devin good. Booker the other night. I don't yeah. know if yeah. you saw that. That yeah. was a heck of a rejection. He's the modern Theo Ratliff. Again, he's headed toward... And that he'll be traded a bunch of times because he has a terrible contract that everybody just uses to acquire assets? Just out there swatting. Okay. I, I just had to make sure that I clarified there. Because that was the thing he was more known for. It, it, you, you couldn't really say his name without out also following with the third word being contract. He got paid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Theo Ratliff's expiring contract. That was like a thing for, I don't know, like four years in the NBA. Good old nice. Theo. Right. Uh, yeah, Kessler. He's going to be uh, one of the better rim protectors for a while, I think. Already exceeded expectations as a rookie. Okay, so let's go through these teams. Bennett. Yeah. Bennett. You have Nikola Jokic. Mm-hmm. You got Sabonis. You got Anthony Davis. Chet. It's just easily the winning team. Brooke Lopez. 
Walker Kessler. That's a solid team. I have to admit. That's, I'm I'm very happy with that's my a solid draft. team. Yeah. Let me let me I like see how here. confidently you just crown them champions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you've got it all. You've got like different forms of offense in there. Um, two of the best rim protectors. Um, you've got different styles: the length, the the bulk. Uh, I don't know. I'm, it, it's I, definitely the only one here where you could actually put the, a five man lineup out. I know. There. I was and, thinking about that. Like, I could, know that's not what we were doing, but I was sort of thinking about <laughs> you, you it. You could actually kind of survive <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Um, I think if the in season tournament has taught us anything about uh, obscure exercises and NBA happenings. That chalk isn't always the answer. So let's let's wait till we hear. <laughs> Nikola all, Jokic all the isn't rosters. always the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my team: Joel Embiid. Wemby, Chris Stapps, Jonas Valanciunas, Jarrett Allen, Mo Wagner. Not a bad squad. It's a good that's, team. That's that's a pretty solid team. I have no idea who's handling the ball on that team. I guess it's Embiid, uh, just because there's really no good options. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like that. You, you've got some shooting there. Mm-hmm. You've definitely got shot blocking. You got a. Enforcer, Jonas, like if somebody gets out of line, I'm sending Valanciunas your way and you're going to regret it. Good mix of Europeans. Yeah. Mo Wagner. Mo, Mo Wagner's got like a kind of fun game to him. He's got these like things that he can do offensively. Not great defensively, but whatever. A- Aaron's team. Bam Adebayo. That's great. Great. Then Cat with the <laughs> With the second pick, followed by Rudy Number Gobert. Number four overall pick. <laughs> followed by Rudy Gobert. I can't play five centers down low. I need to have someone spotting up to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> then so so it's Bam, Cat, Rudy, Shengun, Miles Turner, DeAndre Ayton. Miles Turner is your fifth. It's a tough situation. <laughs> yeah. What was I gonna do? It's, I, I think it's <laughs> Jared pretty... Allen went off the board right before that, and I was hurting. It's, I think it's... we've got a one A and one B, and then third place. Yeah, very, <laughs> right very easily third. I place. disagree. I think I have. Uh... You literally have the Minnesota Timberwolves two centers. Bam's a great shooter. I mean, they, to be fair, they've Cat's been really a great good. Shooter. That's true. They have been good. Yeah, number one and number two defensive rating. Uh, yeah, are, are, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an I, want, I wonder that why. Stat. I wonder that, why Cat is. <laughs> got, that, that says more about that stat than anything else. That that's it, it's. I like, think baby don't let, Jokic don't take s- shines in this situation when he's setting up these other guys and really, mm. really shining mm. in the moment. Okay. Who's All your right. Who's your cutter? Oh, DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, he's got to be the effort guy now. <laughs> he, he's <laughs> the hustle boy. He's got, you're, you're counting on DeAndre Ayton to move without the ball? He's got, really? he's got long arms, so it eliminates how many steps he's going to have to take. Okay. Interesting. Right. Great Interesting. wingspan. That'll work well around Shingun for sure. Sounds sounds good. Who, sounds who do you like think won work. between me and Matt? I mean, I think it's Bennett. Just barely, though. Yeah, should I think we so should too. we I do, I, should we I allow should we like encourage fans to vote somehow on this like how do we do that just ask them in the comments you always like reviews just I don't know if you want to put that in a review though like oh okay sorry but I cer- certainly forgot. you're such if you a want stickler email, about your reviews yeah if, if yeah if you want to email me um, or email the podcast uh, the, emailing the podcast basically means emailing me and that's m schubert with a c s c h u b e r t at denverpost.com. And you can let us know what who won. Is it Bennett? Team Bennett? I mean, everybody's going to say Team Bennett because they got Jokic. I mean, that, that's... no. uh I don't pander. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, send it in. Rank it. Let us know. Uh, was Aaron's uh, third or 13th? We don't know. Bam's got a nice mid-range game. I can't believe I got... Anthony Davis with the seventh pick. Yeah, in retrospect, I, I kind of I'm looking at at my team and and maybe I, I went a little early on Victor Wembanyama. I don't know, Chet Brook and <laughs> Walker maybe. Kessler down the stretch isn't my favorite squad. Um, I'm I'm pretty happy with all those picks. They're all right. I don't know. I'm I mean like Chet is just like better value Wemby in this draft setting. So 
<laughs> Better value Wemby, really? Yeah. yeah, you had to burn an early pick on him, and I, I got who, Chet who down recently, the road. Who recently beat Chet with a jump ball? Somebody w- was like, I couldn't believe that. that Was it Jokic that beat him with a I don't think so. Jokic beat Wemby. Well, yes, that was uh, okay. That was what it was. Where it was yeah. like I can't believe that actually happened. Yeah, it must have been must have been a weird toss. I had a I was I'm in the corner of the arena every time, so it's not the best angle for me. But but yeah, he did. Yeah. What a moment! Jokic is sneaky athletic. You want to read a review? Uh, well, we've got reviews, but I, I um, I'm not quite there yet. I want to get to our one email. Uh, that I received about our tough guy debate. I just I have to find it first. So um, if you guys have any other thoughts on your teams, you can fill that space right now. While Was I it from through. one of the guys discussed? Uh, no, we did not discuss uh, this particular player. Here's the thing: I I covered Walker Kessler in college, so you know I know what he's all about. I know the kind of person he is, and I know that he's not going to have an ego about coming off the bench on this team. That I've built, you know, like it's tough to be. That's fun to go from a starting situation to being a sixth man. So you're, uh, there's a there's a psychological factor involved here, for sure, for sure. And uh, we know we know he's got the character to to sort of embrace his role coming off. The I'd bench, like to so. say I have the like, best defender on my roster, and he also shut down the entire league's operations for a period of time when he infected them. I feel pretty happy about having Anthony Davis and Brooke Lopez defensively in my starting five. That's that with, it's, it's hard to argue with another that. one of the best rim protectors coming off the bench. Um, so and also Chet's out there, like, come on, Rudy spread league wide virus, like, that's hardcore. Yeah, that is <laughs> <laughs> like, I've okay, never I seen found it, I found it, I found <laughs> it. Okay, so here, here is our that was good job filling in, by the way. That was no, yeoman's at work right there. Yeah. Um, this is Michael Handy. Michael Handy. You think that's a real name, Michael Handy? That's got a name. I'm I'm voting real. Yeah, all right. Michael Handy, he's weighing in here. Hey, Matt, just listened to the podcast and enjoyed it thoroughly, as I always do. Thank you, Michael. That's a nice thing to say. I just wanted to throw in my two cents on the ultimate NBA tough guy. You mentioned Oakley, but I can guarantee you he would have his, we can't say this word, butt kicked, all over the court by Wilt. And by Wilt, I'm pretty sure he means Wilt Chamberlain. And it would not have even been close. Wilt was the baddest cat to ever step on an NBA court, no doubt. You may not know this fact. Wilt wanted to fight Ali, and Ali refused to fight him. Wilt would have beat the crap out of Ali, and he knew it. My dad would love this guy. <laughs> That was a strip weathers take right there. <laughs> Little cars, I you know the I, old heads. I I I, I see, I'll say this: like he definitely um, he has a point. Will Chamberlain was Will Chamberlain is like maybe one of the few guys from that era where you look at him and you're like, you know what? I could just plop him into the modern NBA and he'd just be fine. He'd still be a fantastic player. Um, so like physically amazing. We all know that he was quite the uh, ladies' man as well. So you can put that in under under his resume. Oh, now, and the tough guy category. I don't know if mean? that works in the tough guy, but but here's the thing: Bill Russell owned him. As a matter of fact, I just pulled up a Wilt Chamberlain versus Bill Russell brawl game two of the '66 Eastern Conference Dang, Finals. We didn't talk about that one. No, no, we didn't. Bill Russell put his hand on Wilt's throat. Wilt's John with him, but he looks like he's saying, hold me back, hold me back, and then he's talking. It looks more like Bill Russell. Bill Russell's the tough guy. Bill Russell's the guy. Bill, I, Michael, thank you, first of all, for emailing in. Really appreciate it. But I got I to gotta disagree. Bill Russell's the tough guy from that era. There's no – I mean, the guy won 11 I championships. I it's probably true, yeah. 11 I love, championships. I love Wilt because I was, I was raised in a, in a Lakers um, – Household, sure, a mild Lakers household in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, <laughs> okay, I can see but, that. But, uh, but yeah, it's hard to deny. He's yes. it's Bill. Yeah, yeah, but Will believe I believe. And also, can you blame Ali for not wanting to fight Will? I mean, Will, th- just think about the reach Will Scott on Ali. That's that's. I mean, he can't. Eat. How do you get on? How do you get inside? Yeah, on Ali Will. took on a. A spectacle fight once against a pro wrestler in Asia, and the guy laid on the mat and kicked him in the shins <laughs> yeah. for okay. 20 minutes. So probably didn't want to get involved in another such situation. Right. Um, the 
St. Louis Hawks traded Bill Russell. Nice work, St. Louis. To the Boston Celtics. <laughs> and now they don't exist. Well, they exist, but in a different town. Um, really brutal. Um, I'm trying to see where... Uh, I'm trying to see w- who they got in that trade. Um, okay, well, while you're doing that, um, we've got uh, one new review on iTunes. A reminder to all of our listeners, go to iTunes, rate the podcast, Nuggets, Inc., five stars. Lie with your stars. Tell the truth with your review. And here's our review. This is from Heisman H. Oh, the Heisman Trophy weighing in. Five stars. The, uh, the the title is just Nuggets Inc. Maybe do a little bit better with the title. Really enjoy this podcast. I miss Singer, but Durando really knows the game. Kids should stick to print. Schubert has potential. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. Which is the bigger insult? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Schubert, Schubert has <laughs> potential. Is <laughs> the young up and comer. <laughs> It, there's like three in there. It's uh, it's there's like basically the only one who comes out of that unscathed is Singer. I think. What about me? <laughs> well, it's, yeah, said yeah. I know the game. <laughs> yeah, but but it's after he, he says he misses Singer, so he's basically That's saying fine. like I, I'd kind of rather have Singer no, than no, you. No, I, I expect people to miss Singer. But. <laughs> <laughs> up and cover, Matt Schubert. <laughs> Watch out, the Shangoon of podcasting. <laughs> He's, he's the DeAndre Ayton. He's forever a project. Like, call- we're we're going to get him to pop one of these days. They're calling him Baby Durando. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> on draft day in 1956, the Celtics acquired the draft rights to second pick Bill Russell from the Hawks in exchange for Ed McCauley, I believe it's pronounced. Oh, is he Ed McCauley? Ed McCauley and yeah. Cliff Hagan. I think those guys were good, but they, they were good, but it's Bill not Russell. Bill Russell. Yeah. yeah, Bill Russell is like the the ultimate winner. Yeah, there is no nobody. He literally doesn't have enough fingers to fit all of his championship rings. That's that's hard to argue. That's against. nice counting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In a four team league. Oh come on! You really uh, did you did you just? <laughs> Aaron said plumbers. <laughs> did, did you really just do that? <laughs> come on. Get out of this here. This has gone off the rails ever since Aaron picked Cat. It was downhill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, as always, uh, go to iTunes, leave a review. Five stars. Lie with your stars. Tell the truth with your review. Bennett, as always, good times. Great fun. I probably won the center draft, but we'll see. We'll see what the uh, yeah. The let me know Twitter or wherever you can. Yeah, can let us know wait, who wait, won. wait, Please wait do. in. We want to know what you think. It definitely wasn't Aaron. I mean, we know that much. Vote cat twenty twenty four. We'll be back again soon. Um, I believe uh, the Nuggets. What, what is the Nuggets next game? Are they? Is it the L A Houston thing? Or they got another one before that? Don't they? They've got Friday, Saturday, road back to back. That's right. Uh, uh, Phoenix, 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 Sacto. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. The Sacramento game will be great. A Saturday night That's game in exciting. Sacramento is. It's a fantastic environment, <laughs> and you'll be there. Correct? I will not. Oh, you will not be in Sacramento. No. Oh, well, sorry for you. Bummer. Yeah. Maybe next time. I'm yeah. traveling a lot in December, so. Yep, yep. All right, fellas. As always, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. And now we go out with some really good music by our guy, Shaman Noah. Looks like we have another dragon, Master Ace, spitting the burning passion. It's about to be a catastrophe. Thought I was the only survivor, but at last we meet. Like the food vegans don't eat I know you can see the infernal blaze We would probably burn the stage And leave it with third degrees And inside of us is an internal blaze Blazing eternally like a furnace But it's so hot it's burning The furnace is framed Your family and furniture isn't safe Better evacuate Cause the skill we can calibrate Reduces the chances of your survival If you ever try to retaliate So dance to this recital So you can slowly gravitate towards us Who needs a chorus When you're hotter than Earth's core is No strings attached with no puppets Yo, we're cordless I fly 
right Even when I'm hurt, yo, that's soaring Your skill isn't apparent, it's an orphan We proceed to spit the verse That takes your spirit and lifts it high into the earth's Atmospheres don't come Atmosphere of influence, you squares I take a spear and put it through ya yeah, I raise the stakes, ha, medium rare You're the least of the media's fears Why he's the reason the media's scared Please be prepared to be impaired Go see repairs, defeating people in pairs Jordans, I thought I needed pairs To be compared to the people in pairs this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values, and a new experience. <laughs> Gather round hip hoppers, that's if you're still living. Still got love for the game, I'm still giving and still driven. Like Diddy in the Maybach. I've been repping for the city since way back. All y'all rappers better stay back. Cause you still can't find me, I'm a needle in a haystack. A rare breed sitting high up in the chariot. While y'all dudes getting high up in the Marriott. Well, consider this your wake-up call If you're married to the game, it's the breakup call And you ain't wearing a crown if you're not tearing it down You clowns get found right there in the ground Six feet, dirt nap, that's because your shit's weak I'm a giant, you a pipsqueak Welcome to my kingdom, yup, throne as an occupant Read my name at the bottom of the document Check the scroll, giving good times like Esther Roll. Peace to Keith and E, God bless the soul. Trying to get more checks to hold. On some slick brick, Mr. T shit, big chest of gold. And the flow still extra cold, like the North Pole. Cocaine snow, another lost soul. Bow down, it's the Grand Royal, yup. 20 plus years in the game, still the fans loyal. <laughs> 